Okay, so we are now logged into the Windows 8.1 machine. Let me just click the start menu so you can see that it is Windows 8.1. The first thing we need to do before we do anything is we need to actually go in and look for Windows Defender on the machine or if you have antivirus you need to go through and make some specific changes in order for the install to complete. So I'm going to choose Windows Defender. What I'm actually going to do is go to settings and excluded files and locations and then I'm going to choose to browse and I'm going to go through and specify a location. Now my location hasn't been created yet so what I'm actually going to do is just quickly run through to my C drive I'm going to go in and create a new folder and this is where I would like my Metasploit to be installed into. Let's just minimize that. I'm going to click browse and now I'm going to go to that location that I just created Metasploit, click OK and I now have a location that has now been added and excluded so that means that anything that's in that folder structure is not going to get picked up by the Windows Defender. What I'm also actually going to do is I'm going to go in and this may not go well but I'm going to turn off the real-time protection as part of during the install process and this is purely based on the fact that I don't want the antivirus components of Windows Defender to pick up any of the install pieces and then break my Metasploit install. So I'm actually going to click that and click Save and then obviously it tells him my PC is at risk but I can turn this back on after the install has been completed. Now if you're using something other than Windows Defender then you'll need to do something similar where you'll exclude that directory that you want to install into and you don't have to do the real-time protection but I find it's easier doing the install on a Windows machine that way. So let me just minimize that and let's go to my browser. Now I navigated to rapid7.com, clicked on products and then went to Metasploit and then I'm presented with two options, Metasploit Pro and Metasploit Community. For the purposes of this, we're going to use Community. I would suggest that if you are using Community and you've done everything possible, then maybe Metasploit Pro is an option for you later on. So I'm going to click Download Metasploit. I'm not going to go and complete the form right now, but the form is there for you to complete, which will then send you an email with the license key and the link to the downloads. This link to the downloads will send you here where you can download the Windows or Linux 64-bit versions or the Windows 32-bit versions. Now I've already downloaded that file so I'm going to now browse to my downloads file which is here and I'm going to run the installer. Now of course I'm using user account control which is good practice so of course I'm going to have to say yes for the install. Let me just minimize these windows and now the installation will continue. So we'll click next through the wizard. I'll accept the license agreement and then my directory. If I had created some other directory I can actually browse backwards and forwards but I'm using C Metasploit and this is one of the reasons why you'll notice that I had to do that piece first because the next message that comes up is disable your antivirus and disable the firewall. Now disable the firewall isn't as important as antivirus for now but in the future when you want to use Metasploit and communicate outside of your machine the Windows firewall may block that traffic coming back in. So you may have to make some changes to your firewall, disable it or whatever else it might be. I'm going to click next. It's going to go ahead and do some checks and this will actually check your antivirus and your firewall and if there was an issue it would have failed at that point. Now part of Metasploit is actually a web interface for you licensing and running components. So we're going to choose the SSL port. I'm going to leave it as the default 3790. Click next. I'm going to leave the local host the same. I'm going to leave it as the valid number of days. This is a certificate that gets generated to bind to that website. And then of course, yes, I want to trust the certificate. Otherwise, it means I have an issue every time I try to access the site. I'm going to click next. And now it's going to go ahead and do the, the installation itself. So this shouldn't take too long. What's going to be installed is it's going to unpack all the files that we need, put them into the location, it will provision 
uh, as, as a bunch of services and processes that would allow the website to run so we can put the key inside of it. It will then also install the console application that we need to use, the terminal components. Now, of course, some of these phrases are obviously normal in Linux, but for Windows, we don't really have that idea of a terminal window as such. So this will install all of those components. Metasploit is now completed and you'll notice that the very first option is to access the Metasploit web UI and that's checked by default so we'll go ahead and use that one click finish and this will then load our web page we're going to allow blocked content because obviously I need to be able to access the site itself and you'll see that it opens up a specific page that's installed in our structure and I'll click browse to the site so localhost 3790 and you'll see right here that we're able to go through and configure an account I am going to use my standard username now of course be aware that the password is not as simple as if I just type my normal really simple password and then try to click create account it'll come back and complain and tell me that you can't use that because the password is a list of common ones or whatever else so it actually tells you right here, because it's administrator level, it needs a strong password. Passwords must contain letters, numbers, and one special character, and not contain a username or predictable, etc., etc. So I'm actually going to choose a more secure password, which conforms to all of those, and then click Create an Account. So now that my account has been created, um, I can either go ahead and say Get Product Key, which will take me to the site for registering and then getting a key or I could simply paste in my license key that I got previous to me installing the software. Remember that when you register the email comes and in there is an activation key. So I'm going to activate my key. Now my key is unique to me so there's no point taking it and using it for yourself. This is purely for me. And of course, now it says, please restart your Metasploit instance. And so you can see that we have our instance here. We can click into it and we can do all kinds of different things. Now, we're not going to focus on using the web user interface, though the web user interface is nice. You can do scans. You can connect it to other systems. That's not what we're going to choose. So to complete this installation, I'm just going to minimize the browsers. And what we can do is if we go to the services.msc inside Windows, we'll wait for that to load. And you'll see that we have the Metasploit services running. What we're able to do now is I can actually click to restart the service. Now, you could do them all one by one, which is what I'm going to do. Or you could just write a script that would do it and say restart all of the services one by one. So I'm actually going to restart these the pro service, the thin service, the worker service, and then the actual database service itself. And once that's done, now of course the easier way would be to actually just reboot the machine, um, which will do everything for you anyway. So now that we have it installed, if we go and look here, you'll see that we have Metasploit Web UI, we have Metasploit Console. So if I just choose Console, which is the core application, just to make sure that it's running, Metasploit Pro Console should be loaded. It'll come up here. Don't worry about the issue about deprecation warning. I've seen this a few times. But if we leave it a moment, this should load, and then we should be presented with the MSF Console ready for us to type any syntax that we need to use. And our console is now loaded. And so from here, we can now start typing syntax. And so that's completed the install of Metasploit on a Windows 8.1 workstation. So now let's swap over 
and perform a similar install on our Ubuntu Linux machine. And here we are at our Ubuntu desktop. Remember that I'm using Ubuntu 15.04, which is the latest build, but it's not the long-term support build, which is 14.04. However, the installation is exactly the same. So as before, I'm going to open the browser, and you'll see that we're taken to the same download link. Obviously, last time we chose this one. This time we're going to choose this download. Now, I've already downloaded the file, so I don't have to run through this. So I'm going to minimize that. And what I'm then going to do is choose my files and go to my download location where I have Metasploit Latest Linux x64. Now, the difference is here, I'm going to be using Linux for the install, so I'm going to open up a terminal. And I'm simply going to browse to my downloads folder. And then what I need to do is we need to modify the mode of the installer. Now, we normally use a command called uh, chmod. And I'm going to write some syntax here that's going to allow me to modify and make this, raw, this installer file make it executable so we can actually use that. So once that's been done, I'm then able to run sudo and and then tell it that I want to run the Metasploit run installer. So first off, it's going to ask me for my sudo password. So I'm going to click that. And then Metasploit will begin its installation process as before. You'll notice it's using the same kind of wizard install. So I'm going to click forward. I accept the agreement. It's going to create me a folder, which is the opt Metasploit. Now, the word of warning again here would be if you have the firewall or antivirus installed on your Linux machine, then this directory will also need to be uh, excluded from those processes. I'm going to install it as a service because I would like it to automatically start every time I boot the machine. Or you can choose not to. I like to have yes because this is normally the machine that I would use it on. I'm going to click forward. It then gives us the regular warning about disabling antivirus and firewall. I'm going to click forward. And this is Membase going to go ahead and check. And at that point, if there was an issue, it would have stopped the install. I'm going to use the same port as the last one. I'm going to choose the same settings, localhost, the, set, the trust certificate, click forward, and then it's going to go ahead and do the same installation that we just did on Windows using the same kind of wizard. Okay, and as before, Metasploit has completed, and now we get access to the web UI. So I'll click Finish. And as you can see, the browser has opened as before, and we can click localhost 3790. Now, of course, the difference being that because I'm using Firefox, it doesn't necessarily like everything that's there. So I'm going to click Add Exception. I'm going to confirm the security exception, and this will then load the localhost 3790 site exactly as it did before where we're able to add an account same as before that's used as the administration account for getting it getting into the site so we'll just wait for this to load as before let's add an uh, account and click create and then once this is being created we should then be able to activate using our license key and here we go so I'm gonna paste my license key back in click activate license and this will then activation is now been done and of course it then says please restart a specific system now, of course, what's great about using Linux is that I can simply come here and 
I could open a new terminal. Wait for this to load while that one's running in the background. And I could do sudo bash opt metasploit. Remember, that's the location it was installed. And there's a CTL script that's in there. And I can run restart. Now, of course, it'll ask me for the password again. And what this should do is this the control script shall go ahead and restart all of the services and start them back up again so that we're able to use Metasploit. So I'll just wait for that to finish. There we go, the worker, the Metasploit, the pro service, the web interface, and then the database piece are all being restarted and stopped. Okay, almost finished. Okay, we're back. Now what I should be able to do is I can actually go to this directory here and type msf console and msf console should literally do the same as it did on the windows machine it says it's starting it says oh hey you're running it as root we're not too stressed about that right now but you'll notice that it's given us the message starting metasploit and hey presto we're able to load metasploit ready for us to type syntax so that completes the installation of metasploit onto a ubuntu linux machine